Welcome back to the 49ers live looking here at training camp. You know, every single practice, I try to bring you a special guest, and I don't think we can get more special than this. I'm joined by 49ers general manager, John Lynch, and here's the thing. Usually John and I aren't this far <laughs> apart, but we're making sure we're staying extra cautious, extra careful. We're following the mandates. We're being safe out here amid these COVID changes. But with that, John, how are you doing? How are you handling all of the changes going on? Uh, I'm doing good, Keon. I feel like I'm back in the broadcast group talking over the crowd noise. We got we got the uh, the music going. We got the horn blowing. But that's NFL training camp football, and it, it is a different year. You know, six feet away, um, all the protocols. But I'm really proud of our group, our staff, uh, our players. They've taken this all to heart. They've taken it seriously for their safety, for everyone else's safety, and so that we can play football. And the early returns have been really good, uh, both in terms of staying healthy and then what's going on in the field. It's been encouraging. I've, I've been told in some of the comments, they're like, why are you yelling? If you guys could hear what's going on in our background right here, we've got the music blaring, but it's a good time. The guys are out on the field getting back into football. But with all of the changes, how has COVID kind of changed your job and your role here, uh, like evaluating this team? Well, certainly, I mean, you've seen some roster churn of late, and um, I think some of that has been for various reasons. Some, you know, we had a couple guys, uh, I think three, choose to opt out, and that, that caused, um, you know, some movement. Now, moving players isn't like uh, bringing players in, uh, isn't like it used to be. There's a period where they have to go through, through the testing protocols, and, and so it's required more patience. It's, it's required more work. Um, there's always it's always work intensive, but um, you know our pro staff, our college staff, is that it's just been all hands on deck, and uh, understanding that that you know this is a year where more than ever you got to be able to adapt. Um, there's new rules in place with COVID uh, in terms of like our practice squad will be comprised of 16 players, six veterans. In the past, it's always been 10. Um, so there's some things that are changing, and we got to stay on top of that. So it's been good and. Um, you know, the bottom line is it's football, and uh, we got to put a good team out there. We're real proud of this roster and, and uh, still got work to do before we get to week one. You talk about having to adapt, and one thing, I mean, this has been a completely different offseason. Usually you have the guys that sometimes they're back in the building back in April, and they have the offseason program, they have the mini camp, they have OTAs, but none of that this year. Everything's kind of done virtually. Guys are at home working out, staying in shape, but I want to know how, do you, how content are you with how the guys return back to the facility after having kind of an offseason on their own. Yeah, I'm really proud of them. And I, I think this goes back to our, uh, you know, our player acquisition process, uh, whether it be the draft, free agency, uh, trades. We try to bring the right kind of guys in. And I think when you have the right kind of guys with the right mindset, it's a lot easy to have guys who, uh, who are going to adapt. It's easier to trust that wherever they are throughout the country, like they were this year, they're going to be training and they're going to be working because they know what's in front of them and they know that the hard work can translate into future success. And so I think we got a bunch of like minded people that took care of their business and they showed up in great shape. And, um, you know, I think Kyle and his staff, we've got great teachers on our coaching staff. It was a, it was a real treat to watch them work with our players and, and try to find an advantage and look for the positives. If there is any positives, you could really get down deep into details of our offense, of our defense, of our special teams. And, and I think everybody responded as such. And our players uh, came back ready to play. Now they just got to get their bodies right. We're here at the 49ers live looking at training camp. Streaming live with 49ers general manager John Lynch. As you see, the guys are taking part in drills right behind us. Uh, I, I hate keeping the camera on myself, but I guess you would rather see John Lynch than me. So that's totally fine. But John. I'm sure your Twitter mentions were blowing up all offseason because even mine were, and I have nothing to do with the football side of things, but pay George Kittle. <laughs> pay George Kittle. When are we going to pay George Kittle? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the man has been paid. John Lynch is done with that. But how good does it feel to just be able to wash your hands and now you can just focus on football? It feels great. You know, a lot was talked of it um, because he's a special player. And, and I think everyone realizes that what he means to this place um, – you know, we use music to, to get everybody up around here. I don't know if we need it, though, because we've got guys like George Kittle. We've got guys like Fred Warner, and um, they kind of bring the juice and energy every day, aside from being tremendous players. And, gosh, I, I'd love to tell everybody we knew exactly what we were getting when we drafted a skinny 
uh, kind of awkward looking <laughs> running kid from Iowa um, back in 17. Um, we, we had some hopes that he had some qualities that we really liked, but you got to give George a lot of credit. You got to give uh, John Embry, you know, his, um, but, but really George's work ethic, the, the routine that he's established, um, his want to be great. And it is a lot of guys want to be great, but are they willing to do what it, it takes? And, and number one, you got to be blessed by the man upstairs. George was, um, but you have to be able to put the work ethic in and, and the work in, and he does day in, day out. And you've seen a guy just collectively uh, day in, day out get better, and now you got the end result, and we're just thrilled to have him around here for six more years. That's awesome. We have a lot more of George Kittle's woos, his first yeah. down celebration, six more years of that right here. Um, but let's talk about this tight end group. It's, it's a different group than what we've seen in years prior. We have Charlie Warner, a six-round pick coming in. He was an excellent run blocker. You've got Jordan Reed just added him into the mix. We have Ross Dwelly, another year in this offense. What have you seen, or what makes this this unit, this tight end group, so dynamic, so special in 2020? Yeah, well, we, we just talked a lot about George, and I think everyone knows who George Kittle. Now we got trains running by. <laughs> um, but uh, – you know, after him, Ross Dwelly, he's kind of become one of these Mr. Reliable. He, he yeah. His, uh, like in a subtle way, his contribution to this team didn't have a ton of catches, but when he caught them, they were in big moments. And he just does a lot for this team that goes unnoticed, I think, in uh, special teams and as a tight end. He's a complete player. He can block very well, both at tight end, as a move tight end, at fullback last year when Juice was hurt. Um, so he's invaluable. Uh, Charlie Warner was a guy that we really liked um, in the draft, and we took him later, but he's, he's fitting in really well. I think he, he fits what we do. Um, we're really excited about his, his ability. He's got to go do it when the, when the lights you know, come on, but uh, everything he's shown, shown uh, has, has demonstrated that he, he'll be able to do that. Then Jordan Reed, kind of a wild card, but it's something we started looking at early this offseason. Uh, did a lot of work on his health and uh, his readiness to play, his want to play, and uh, at the end decided it was a great fit. We've been very um, very judicious about bringing him back slowly, getting his legs underneath him. It's been a while since he's played, and hopefully we're nearing uh, that opportunity when he's out here. I think today he's going to be doing some things, and I broadcasted a lot of Jordan's game. He's a big-time talent, and, you know, Kyle had six months with him, one season with him, and uh, – He's incredibly excited. Uh, we are, all are, and, and uh, I think it could be a really strong group and really a strength of this team when, when it's all said and done. They're coached by a tremendous coach in John Embry. Um, you know, they're the first ones out here every day hitting those sleds day in, I day can out. I, I can attest to that. I see yeah. them out here on the field. Yeah, so it's, it's a group we're very excited about. You talk about people fitting what you guys do, and so now i got to ask you, one of the marquee moments of training camp is everybody wants to go look at those one and one-on-one -on -one battles and it primarily looking at Nick Bosa and Trent Williams. Have you gotten a chance to go watch that? What's been your take? Well, there, there's a lot more than that going on during one-on-ones. There's a, you know, tremendous, I mean, that's, that's like out, outside in the backyard with your big brother or your, or your sister playing soccer or whatever. I mean, that's true competition. And, uh, our players look forward to that, but I will say it's it's must-see TV to, to watch those two. Wherever I'm at on the field, I try to watch the whole picture, but my eyes go right there. Two pros that are incredibly blessed with talent, but they, they uh, really are technicians and want to be great, and they challenge each other each and every day. And to watch the respect amongst each other, it looks like during the snap they're trying to kill each other, but then they help each other up. They yeah. compare notes. It's really been fun to watch. Two guys do, who can do it as well as anyone in this league. And, they, you know, the coolest thing is to hear them say how much better they're going to be for it. Yeah. Um, iron sharp, sharpening iron at the highest level. I had as a guest Matt Mayoko a couple of days ago, and he brought up a really great point. We were talking about the loss of the preseason, and, you know, that might affect a lot of these undrafted guys or some of the rookies not getting those reps and those snaps. But I talked about maybe a guy like Trent Williams who hasn't played the game in a year. Same goes for a guy like Jordan Reed. But what he said was, you got to think about it. The guys don't practice that day before a game. 
they're playing the game that day, and then they might have that next day off. So now these guys are giving these extra days, these extra reps that are more like game time reps going against a guy like Nick Bosa. Do you see the value in that as well? Yeah, it's um, like Ben Peterson, our head of uh, health and performance, who kind of looks at the analytics side of ramping players up. It's, it's his dream because you don't have, um, you know, it's always traveling, puts a – puts a wrench in your schedule uh, playing a game because you have to get the the guys that are going to play in the preseason games ready and you have to adjust reps. This allows us just really to control the variables. So in a, in a lot of ways, it's great. I think a big advantage for us, it's something we pride ourselves on. It goes way back to Bill Walsh. Um, being able to practice full speed, but taking care of each other, be, protecting the team, as we said, and Kyle puts a lot of work in showing examples of how we protect the team. We aren't always perfect because uh, the excitement gets the, and competitive nature gets the better of us. But I think we really simulate everything but taking guys to the ground and doing it in a full speed manner. It gets us ready to play, albeit without preseason games. It is tough, though, I will say, for players we haven't seen who haven't done it at this level. Um, you know, the Charlie Warners, the Brandon Ayukes, we feel very good about where they're at, but we won't know until they go out and do it on game day. But that's always the case in the NFL. So that's, that's an interesting dynamic to look at, probably more so than those guys, the undrafted free agents, that really um, it, they, it takes the preseason game for them to open eyes. I mean, they can do it out here, but so many examples of guys in the fourth preseason game I was watching Hard Knocks the other night, and Austin Eckler against us in preseason made his way. So um, that's that's sad that that's not there, but we're, we're trying to come up with other ways to evaluate. I want to talk a little bit about the energy at practice, and in particular yesterday, Kyle Shett said that this was probably the most physical practice on, uh, what was yesterday, on Thursday. Do you agree with that, and what's your been your take? How are you enjoying kind of this, this uptick in energy, especially coming off of an off day? These yeah. guys look like they were ready to be back. Well, to me, if you if you remember last year, early on, I felt like our defense was really dominating mm -hmm. the early flow of, of the practices. It's been a little more defense has a good day, offense has a good day. And I, I think the defense kind of looked at it and, and said, we got to get our swag back. And so they came back extremely physical yesterday. The offense started getting maybe backed up early on. And then they said, we better step up. And it came into a very chippy and physical practice. Um, probably crossed the line a couple times um and kyle addressed that today but all in all i thought it was one of our crisper practices of the year it was great intent guys taking care of each other but playing physical so i thought it was a very good practice how much we, we talked about it just a little bit but with some of these undrafted guys how much more challenging will it be just to kind of evaluate them on the field without having that preseason it's tough, but that's our job. Um, and it's really um, incumbent upon the coaches uh, to put them in game-like situations where we can do everything but tackle them to the ground and and try to uh, make our best judgment on who can help this team, whether it be on the practice squad, whether it be on the 53. And um, I can tell you that, you know, one of the hallmarks of, of – of our regime, we don't care where you were drafted, how you were drafted, if you were drafted. Uh, if you can play and help us, you're going to be here. So um, that's communicated to these guys on a daily basis, and, and practice gives them ample opportunity. Yes, a preseason game would be nice, but that's not the, the year we're in. 2020 is a different year, and they have to understand that, and they do. I want to talk about one of the other hot topics that's kind of been going on, and that's the injuries at wide receiver, 49ers. My lead into the season, not being without Debo Samuel, we got the news about Richie James Jr., also Jalen Hurd, but brought in some veterans uh, in onto the roster earlier this week. But I want to know, what what have you seen out of some of these guys in Jerron Brown, J.J. Nelson, Tavon Austin, that fit what you guys are doing here? And Kyle said that these aren't just camp bodies. These are also some guys that can compete for a roster spot. What's been your take on these uh, receivers? Yeah, because of the circumstances, you know, uh, Jalen Hurd, unfortunately, going down, you know, non-contact ACL injury, really a shame. Um, my heart goes out to Jalen because he was working extremely hard, and, you know, he's, he's had a string of bad luck, missing his rookie year, and now this year, um, you know, Travis Benjamin opting out. So that creates opportunities, and, and fortunately, there's a lot of good players out there. Uh, it's tough to get them up to speed, but J.J. Nelson, Tavon Austin, 
Jerron Brown. Those are all guys that we've, we've kept our eye on over the years. Um, and uh, they have great opportunities to join our, our younger players and uh, the Brandon Ayukes of the world, the, you know, Debo when he returns and gets healthy, Trent Taylor's back and looking really good. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of uh, opportunity and a lot of guys um, that sense that opportunity and doing their best to be a part of this team. I want to go back to something you said a couple of minutes ago. You're talking about sometimes the defense has a day and then the offense has a day and they're like, we got to step our game up. But usually at this point of training camp, isn't it usually the defense is kind of ahead of the offense? Do you feel like it's still that way or is it kind of a back and forth battle between the positions? Well, I, I think it's a, it's a testament to how our offense has grown. I mean, uh, we have a lot of continuity on our offense right. and uh, we've got a quarterback who who's get gained more and more experience. I should say quarterbacks, plural. They've all been in this system another year. So in the off season with the Zoom meetings, we can get to a higher level of detail and those guys have taken it to the field. So I think it's more a testament to where our offense is at than our defense uh, having lost something. And, and that's a good thing for our team. And th these guys understand it, but still as a defensive player, your attitude is that you should dominate. And, um, you know, we have a prideful group, um, but uh, I like the fact that it's going back and forth and they're each having good days. It's crazy. We're, what day of camp are we in? I, 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 six, I think. Yeah, I think no we're in, idea. We're, <laughs> it, you start to forget as the days go on, but I think we're in day six. And believe it or not, this is the first time ever on our live look-ins that we've gone this far without talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. Believe it or not, <laughs> I feel like he's the hot topic. Everybody wants to talk about him, but, but we haven't. But I want to ask you now – Another another year removed from that ACL injury, an off season that he can just focus on football. How do you hope to see Jimmy progress this season? Well, I, I think that position is, uh, you know, I, I keep talking about it, but um, you know, Jimmy Jimmy has some skills that you can't teach. His ability to get rid of the ball quickly, his arm talent um, is special. Um, you know, the other part of playing quarterback, it's you're a product of your experiences and experiences in this system. Kyle, Mike LaFleur, Mike McDaniel, the entire offensive staff, they ask a lot of our players, and it starts with the quarterback. I mean, just calling our plays. I wish people could hear the length of our plays, but we feel like we can gain an advantage by having that detail, and Jimmy's been tremendous from day one on taking on that challenge, but you can just see the comfort level that, that comes with having been there, done that, and... Uh, Jimmy played really well last year. You don't just take your team, and a lot of people say, well, you know, he was just kind of managing it. They were making it easy on him. Forget about that. Uh, he got to the Super Bowl, and he played really well doing so, and we think he's going to be even better this year. He's showing that on the field. We're, we're really uh, excited for him and his opportunity to show that. We're really proud of Jimmy. All right, so we're winding down. We're only given a certain amount of time that we can film. Of course, like, like I said yesterday, we don't want to give away any trade secrets what's going on on this field right now. But last thing I'm going to throw on you, is there a position or a player, or maybe it's just a position group, that as a GM and a former safety, that you are excited to watch in camp? Kiana, you're, I mean, every position. That's, that's, <laughs> my, that's my job is to, is to look at it. I mean, I tell, tell you how you, you can't help but watch Bosa versus Trent Williams. Yeah. But – we're looking at the same for the 53rd player. You know, this year it's it's 69 players that are in our head because of the 16-person practice squad. So we look at everything, every position, because, you know, especially in this year, your depth is going to be tested. Hopefully we don't have any COVID outbreaks, but yeah. you got to prepare for the worst, and, and we have certainly done that. So you're looking at every position group because it's important. And uh, that's not just a stock answer. That's the truth. And, and – uh, we're excited about where our roster's at. It's deep, it's talented, it's being tested right now, but I think we're equipped to handle it and we we better continue to be because I'm sure more's coming. The more you've been around this league, you just understand that um, you better be willing to answer the call because new situations are gonna, air quality, uh, yeah, COVID, you know, injuries. It's just, there's always something and you gotta be prepared for it. John Lynch, as always, we always appreciate having you. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you here at your 49ers Live Look. And make sure you guys tune in to 49ers.com for more highlights and takeaways from today's practice. And with that, enjoy the rest of your week and be safe out there.